Yes. My goodness me. Sorry, Mrs. Marshman. Thank you. I was wrong. Well done, you guys, for telling me and proving that 35 was not an even number. Do you know, it's because you guys aren't here, look. I'm, I'm, I'm not getting any better at my maths. In fact, I'm getting worse. Let's hope I can get it right today. Right, let's have a look. Let's start by warming up our brains with a little bit of partitioning. Shall we partition the number 33 into tens and ones? How many tens and ones? You are so good at this. Pause the video. I'm going to count down from 10, see if you can do it quicker than 10 seconds. Pause the video now. Oh my goodness me, that was so fast. That was quicker than 10 seconds. 33 is made up of 30 and 3, isn't it? That's the two numbers. We know it's got three tens and it's made up of three ones. Okay, let's have a look at this number. This number is the number 86, not 86, hold on. Yes, 56, 56. Now we're not partitioning it into tens and ones, we're partitioning it into a tens and a tens and a ones, or a tens and a ones and a ones. Now there's gonna be lots of different ways of doing this. I want you to pause the video and see if you can have a go at partitioning it into tens and a ones and a ones, or a, te or a tens and a tens and a ones. If you find this tricky, use your straws to help you. Fantastic. This is one way, just one way of doing it. I could have had all of my tens in one group, then I could have three straws in another group, and I could have my other three straws in another group. Some of you might have put 50 and 1 and 5. Some of you might have put 50 and 2 and 4. Some of you might have put 40 and 10 and 6. I wonder how many ways there are of partitioning 56 into three different parts. Mm. You can pause the video and have a go at that if you would like to and, f and let us know on Tapestry how many ways there are. Now today in maths, don't worry if you haven't done your review, lots of you have already done this. If you haven't, don't worry, we're going to come back to that, hopefully when we come back to school. Okay, we're going to move on now to the next chapter, which is adding and subtracting with word problems. Now, we're all masters at adding two groups together to make a whole number and starting with a whole number and taking one part away to leave another part. Now, the tricky part of our learning for the next couple of weeks is going to be the word problem. It's got the numbers been put into a story. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to try and find the numbers in the story and decide are they parts or are they whole numbers? Are we adding the parts to make the whole number or are we starting with a whole number and are we taking a part away to leave another part that's the tricky part oh, did you get that part so <clears throat> here's our in focus task now you can see the little girl has got some flowers okay now i'm going to read the story to you it says there are eight flowers in the vase and i am holding two flowers let me read that again. This time I want you to close your eyes and I want you to see this picture in your head. I want you to see there are eight flowers in a vase and the little girl is holding two of the flowers. Now has she taken two of the flowers from the vase or has she got two more flowers? Pause the video now and talk to somebody in your household about has she got two more or has she taken two out of the vase? That's right. You can see from the picture that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Look, there are eight flowers. There's the number. Oh, I've, put, I've almost drawn over the number. There's eight flowers in the vase and she's holding two flowers. Here are the numbers. Now, what we need to decide is we need to decide. Is eight a whole number? Is two the whole number? We've got a missing number. Oh my goodness me, this is way too tricky. There are eight flowers in the vase and I'm holding two of the flowers. So what might the missing number be? I'd like to pause the video now and see if you can work out what the missing number is. Is it a part or is it a whole number? Pause the video now. <coughs> You're right, well done. Some of you 
have used representations, which is brilliant. So some of you will have had a look, if you look down here, I've got some actual flowers. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight flowers. Does that represent the part that's in the vase or the part that she's holding? You're right, that's the part that's in the vase. Oh, I've just worked out. Eight is a part, isn't it? Now, look, I've also represented it with flowers. Now, I don't recommend you going out picking flowers from your garden. So some of you might just be using straws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, look, in my hand. Oh, my goodness me. Hold on a minute. There we go. I've got another two flowers. Two more. Now, if I put these two flowers... This part is smaller than that part, isn't it? This part is a smaller part. If I put these two flowers here, now I've got, is this a part or is this a whole number? You're right, it's a whole number. I can represent that by putting two more straws over here. So one part might have been eight. My other part was two. And if I put all of my flowers together to find out how many there are all together, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I should have known that because eight and two makes ten. You're right, that's the number one to ten, isn't it? Eight and two makes ten. Should we say it together? Eight and two makes ten. You're right. Now, I've given you some numbers there. Eight is a part, two is a part. What's the whole number? 8 and 2 is 10. So if you can complete me a part, part, whole. Your part, part, whole might be upside down. Oh, I don't mind which way it is, as long as you've got a part, a part and a whole. Brilliant. Well done. Your whole number, hold it up so I can see it. Fantastic. Your whole number is the biggest number, isn't it? When we put our two parts together... Our whole number is the biggest number. So you should have written in there 10. What was the part that was in the vase? Can you remember what, how many flowers did it say was in the vase? What part of the flowers, of the whole number of flowers was in the vase? You're right, eight flowers were in the vase. This is the part here. This is the part here that was in the vase. This part was in the vase. This part is the biggest part, isn't it? Eight flowers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight flowers. So eight is one part. What's the other part then? You're right. Two. Now, do we think that's an adding number sentence or do we think that's a taking away number sentence? I want you to pause the video now, talk with the people in your household, and I'd like to see if you can have a go at writing me the number sentence that would go with this story that represents eight flowers in a vase, two flowers in her hand, and ten flowers all together. Think carefully how we use our parts and our whole. Fantastic. Well done. Brilliant. Some of you are showing me eight and two makes ten. Some of you have done this. Whoop! Two and eight is ten. It doesn't matter if you talk about the part that was in her hand or the part that was in the vase or if you talk about the vase and then her hand. It's the same thing, isn't it? Right, let's, have, let's move this out of the way and have a little look. <clears throat> let's see if her part, part, whole is the same as ours. Oh, it is the same. Ten is our whole number and it's made up of two parts. One part that was in the vase, the other part that was in her hand. And we can see, here's one part. This is the part of the whole number that was in the vase. Here's the part that was in her hand. Let's see what number sentence she's written. <gasps> Eight and two makes ten. Or she could have written two and... Oh my goodness me, that's a terrible two. That looks like a squiggle. Two and eight makes ten. Okay, fantastic. Right, here's another number story, okay? Easy, easy numbers, <clears throat> but listen carefully to the story. Have a look at the vase of flowers. What do you notice about the vase of flowers? Well done, some of you notice some of them are, are red, 
Some of you notice some of them are yellow. Is there the same number of yellow flowers as there are red flowers? Ooh, it's a double. Well spotted. Six of those flowers are yellow and six of those flowers are red. Well spotted. What's double six then? Well done. Double six is 12. So in that vase of flowers, there's 12 all together. So this vase represents 12 flowers. <clears throat> okay. Now this little boy comes walking along and he says, three of those flowers are for me. And then this little girl says, the rest will be left in the vase for me. Now, where's our whole number? Our whole number is a number of flowers that we're starting with. Now, who came along in the story? That's why it was a little boy. And what did he do? Did he put some more in there? No. You're right, he took some. Did he take them all? Did he take one? Look, he took three flowers for himself. So, these three here, he can have one yellow, one red and one yellow. These are all going to go to him. Okay, so he's now got one, two, three flowers and I can take those away. Oh, look at that. I can take those away. I can take those away from my whole number. Okay, so 12 was my whole number. I've moved three flowers to this little boy. Remember, if you're struggling here, you can represent this with 12 of your straws. Then move three of your straws for the little boy. And how many are left for the little girl? I want you to pause the video and either work that out with your straws. Maybe you could do it on a number line. Maybe you could see if you can draw the, uh, the part, part, hole and write the missing number. Have a go now. <clears throat> well done. The other part that's going to make 12 is nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. So here, these nine, this part here that's left, represents nine, nine flowers. So three and nine make 12. But in this story, where are they putting, did she say, well, right, here's my nine flowers, and did he come along and go, I've got three more for you? That wasn't what happened, was it? They started with the whole number, which is 12. They started with the whole number. Then did we add some? No, we took some away. I want you to have a go now. Pause the video and see if you can work out what might the number sentence be that matches this picture and matches this story. Fantastic. Now, I had a little go while um, <clears throat> I was thinking and I said that there were 12 flowers and then this little girl came along and she took nine and that left three in the pot. Ready? No? Oh, it wasn't her that came along, was it? It was him. He walked along and he said, I'm going to take three of those flowers for myself. Oh, hold on a minute. Right, so that's, that, was, that number sentence was correct. But actually, the number story represented that 12 was the whole number in the vase. Then the little boy came along and he took three away, which left nine in the vase for this little girl. Let's see if you're right. <gasps> 12 take away three leaves what was the missing number well done it was nine fantastic right okay <clears throat> on to our guided practice now we've got one more number story for you remember to use your straws to help you represent this if you are struggling okay um ruby has got seven blue coins. I'd like you to represent that with your straws. Ruby has got seven blue coins. How many straws might we need for that? Do we need 70? No, we don't need 70. We need just seven, don't we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So Ruby has got seven blue 
coins, okay? <clears throat> right, she also has, oh, she also has nine yellow coins. You might want, if you've got coloured straws, you might want to even use coloured straws to help you. I haven't used coloured straws. Who can represent that? Seven blue straws and nine yellow straws. So seven blue coins she's got and nine yellow coins. Can you represent that with your straws? Pause the video and have a go. Fantastic. So most of you have got seven straws in one group and nine straws in another group. Okay, let me see if I can quickly represent that for you. So it's seven with a blue, one, two, five, six, seven. And then nine were the red. Oh, let me see if I've got some more ones down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one more makes nine. So here are the coins, the blue coins, and here are the yellow coins. So I've got one part and I've got two parts made up of seven and nine. Okay, now, do we think... Let's have a look back at the story. It says, how many coins does Ruby have? It doesn't ask you how many blue coins she's got or how many yellow coins she's got. It asks us, how many coins has she got? That means coins are yellow coins and blue coins. So we now need to put all of these coins together. Oh, am I adding here or am I taking away? Watch. <gasps> I've taken one part and I've taken another part and I'm making a really big whole number. This is too difficult to count. What do I need to do? That's right. Let's put them into 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right, I need an elastic band for that one. Let me pop my elastic band. Let me steal an elastic band from this bundle while I'm ooh, waiting. Okay, so I've got one group of 10. This is going to help me work out how many there is all together. So I've got 10, and I can count on 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I've got a 10 and a 6, which makes 16. One 10 and six ones make 16 all together. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to see if in your maths books or on your um, new whiteboards that you've um, got at home, or if you've got a piece of paper or in, straight into your square books, wherever you're going to write it. See if you can have a go at writing the number sentence that matches that story. She had seven blue coins. She had nine yellow coins. There's our two parts. How many coins does she have all together? See if you can write me a number sentence that represents the coins being added to, oh, I gave you a clue then, added together. You're right. Well done. It's an adding number sentence. Oh, I've just done that. <clears throat> we would write seven and nine makes 16. 16 is made up of one ten and six ones. Make sure that you rebundle those straws because 16 is a big number to count. Remember, we practiced that a few weeks ago going one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, it takes forever. Forever and ever. Okay. So seven and nine make 16. Then what you're going to do is you're gonna have a go, use your straws to help you guys. This is really going to be really helpful. Now, the Maths No Problem book has drawn you the two groups. So what you need to do is you need to work out here is, is it an add or is it a takeaway? Are we starting with the whole number, taking away a part to leave the other part? Or are you starting with a part and adding another part to make the whole number? There are eight round buttons. There are five square buttons. How many buttons are there all together? All together. Okay. More. This one says a monkey's got seven bananas. The zookeeper gives him 12 more. More means the number is getting bigger okay so that would indicate that you're um you're making a whole number which means you're putting your two groups together now grown-ups they are going to struggle with this a little bit because it'll be the words here that's going to confuse them okay so make sure you're circling the numbers listening to the words 
closing your eyes and listening to the story. So if you've got a grown up with you, if you've got a brother or sister who can read it to you, so if you can see the story in your head and imagine, is the number getting bigger? Are you adding two parts together? Or are you starting with a big number and is someone taking parts away and you're taking it away? Okay, good luck. We look forward to seeing your work later.